You came to the RMG 28? 28 years ago. Okay. Almost 29. Tell me about that. Tell me about when you came here, what it was like, and uh, what your sort of what you're doing, what your vision for this place was like. That. What did it look like? What it looked like uh, 28 and a half years ago. First of all, I didn't come as the curator. I came as the registrar assistant curator. So I was working a lot with the collection. Um, wasn't doing curating as much as kind of being a support for Joan Murray, who was the curator director at the time. And in 1994, um, I was I was made curator. And then about six or seven years ago, I was made senior curator. So that's, that changed a lot. Once I became mm -hmm. curator, then I could make it a, a bit of my own. So how did you get to here originally? What's your, what's your background in the arts? Well, the background in the arts, um, I actually had a local educator as uh, my high school teacher, Jane Eccles, who is, a, who is a, an amazing painter in her own right. Mm -hmm. So I had her through the first four years of high school. And she very clearly said that I didn't have the talent to really be an artist and I shouldn't pursue fine arts. She was blunt. Um, <laughs> she was also accurate. Mm -hmm. So she said to me, you love art history, why don't you study art history? And I, at the time, didn't even know I could study art history. So I did that. I did an undergrad at Queen's University and then I did a master's degree at the University of East Anglia. But even then, I didn't know what I was going to do with that degree. Um, so I was doing my master's thesis in England, and I had to go to an art gallery, Art Gallery Birmingham, and uh, went into the vault, and we're sitting in the vault with these little white gloves, looking at these drawings, and looking around, thinking, oh my goodness, I could do this for a living. So that was that point of, this is really what I want to do. Now that was like 1985, 86, but it was a starting point. From 1989 to 2018, we've added about 2,500 works to the collection, and each one of those works I was physically actually touching. Mm. So, and I still get to go down to the vault and look through cylinder boxes and look at drawings and go through the racks. That's very much part of the, the job. I mean, we change over our permanent collection um, exhibition on a regular basis. Mm. You're down there all the time. So the art has always been a huge focus of it, whether it's our permanent collection or changing exhibitions by contemporary artists. So, you know, there is uh, a sense of, you know, this wonderful city of ours, and, uh, you know, its association with the arts is um, it's not necessarily something that readily jumps to mind for mm -hmm. people. Uh, but it should. But it should. It, it should. should. It does have a deep history. Um, Talk to me about like the actual gallery and over the course of your years that you've been here, um, how you have been able to just sort of like you know, try your best as possible to push this forward and out. Like how, when you're curating shows, when you're thinking about stuff, you're thinking about, you know, Oshawa as an art place. How does that influence those decisions? It's hard not to think about Oshawa as an art, an art place without thinking about Alexander Luke. Mm -hmm. And you think about Alexandra Luke as a member of Painters 11, but before she was a member of Painters 11, she was bringing art to this city at the YWCA. She curated dozens and dozens of exhibitions at the YWCA. And she taught about art here in Oshawa. And she brought artists here, like Jock McDonald and A.Y. Jackson and, and people that hung around in her house, as well as Isabel Block and doing the same thing mm -hmm. at Parkwood. Um, so this, this city, interestingly enough, is steeped in art. Um, it's a matter of, you know, how do we open the doors? And when I first came, I would say that our gallery, like many art galleries, had more of a white cube kind of feel to it. There was an intimidation factor. And let's face it, this Arthur Erickson building is an amazing building, but you have to walk up staircases, you have to go through two sets of glass doors before you get into this grand foyer. And if you're not used to coming into art galleries, it can be really intimidating. So, um, and I think that was, part of what it was like 28 and a half years ago. It was intimidating. So now, I think in the last number of years, we've tried to open it up, whether it's with RMG Fridays or OPG Second Sundays, it's like a doors open policy, but it's also not just us necessarily giving out. It's how do we connect with community and how do we um, establish who we are together mm -hmm. as opposed to it just being a one-sided conversation. So I think that's really changed a lot um, in terms of who we are and who we're perceived to be, I hope. How does that manifest itself in terms of curating shows? In terms of curating shows, we do think about publics, not mm -hmm. just a single public. Um, I'm very aware of the diversity and the changing diversity within Durham Region and also within Oshawa. So what 
I've been able to do in the last number of years is actually hire diverse curators. So we've had um, a curator from the South Asian community, we've had curators from the black community, um, from the deaf and disabled community. I can't necessarily, I can't tell their stories, they need to tell their stories. So by bringing those people in or bringing their voices in, um, and that's really important too, so that people come into this place and see themselves. Now the one thing that we're doing uh, this coming this coming summer, we're changing over our permanent collection, and we're actually working with an Indigenous advisory committee. So, Some of the shows uh, that you've done over the years, uh, what are the ones that you are most proud of? Okay, so historically, um, Jock McDonald was a, a really important one for me. I co-curated that uh, with two fellow curators. Um, Local, well, I mean, let's talk recently, last year, the 50th anniversary. That, that, that year was exhilarating and exhausting and everything in between. Um, but Durham Reach was a, a, a high point for me, for sure. Being able to bring, again, co-curator Sonia Jones, our associate curator, uh, she and I did research on this for a couple of years. We did tons and tons of, um, of studio visits. And we brought together 74 artists and we took everything down in this building. So it took us three weeks to install this show, but we had 550 people at the opening. And it showed just the depth and the breadth of the talent in the Durham region. So that one, that's a showstopper too, for sure. Yeah, so let's talk about your legacy. Because you do have. What are you most proud of in your legacy? What do you feel as if you contributed to the community, this space, this gallery, it was 28 years and you look back, you say, that one. That one specific thing. Yeah. Uh, if there is one, could be two. I would, I would imagine there's probably quite yeah. a lot. If we asked um, other people, there'd be lots and lots. Yeah. Well, I've worked fab with fabulous artists and, mm -hmm. and I think um, any curator is, is this kind of conduit between the artist and the institution and, and our visitors. So it's that privilege of working with the artists, and that's always been uppermost for me. I mean, there's a lot of administration, there's a, a, a lot of other stuff that goes with it, but working with the artists is, is fabulous. So I'm, I'm really proud of having worked with amazing artists and having been able to bring some of their visions forward. So I'm proud of that. Um, we had a director, David Arant, a form, former director, and he, he came in 2000 and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do more partnerships. So he said, go, go and do more partnerships. So that's something we've done a lot of. So I talked about the fact that we have three upcoming shows that are traveling. Mm -hmm. And we have one that's traveling to five venues after ours. And it's going from Nova Scotia all the way to British Columbia and spots in between. So those artists' voices are now leaving Durham region. So that's important. So number one is the artist. Mm -hmm. they're, they're being recognized outside of this institution. But it also means our institution is being recognized. The name, the Robert McLaughlin Gallery, is being recognized because every time you see the show in, at the Dunlop Gallery or in somewhere in BC, it says, organized by the Robert McLaughlin Gallery. So our name is getting out, of it, out there, but then the city of Oshawa's name is getting out there too. So people are actually starting to think, Oshawa, Robert McLaughlin Gallery, oh, they've got good art happening here. Stuff mm -hmm. is happening there. So I'd say that, that I'm, I'm very pleased with how that's worked out as well and being able to move artists across the country, yeah. Okay, and I am gonna, I will finish up with this one because I'd like to be sort of specific on this one too. Uh, is there a young artist uh, that over the years you, you've got yourself involved with, you've mentored, you've been involved with and, and you know, you have somehow or another enabled them to move into the next level of their careers? Uh, there was one artist, Ed Pian, whose work we showed a number of years ago, and he was talking about, you know, what he'd like to do, and he said, I'd like, love to go to China and, and do these paper cuts and study paper cuts, um, traditional ways to paper cut. And so I found a grant and wrote this grant and got the money for him to go. And that body of work, um, the Art Gallery of Ontario has shown that work, so many institutions have shown that work and or purchased that work. So that's one where I think, ah, you know, I, had, I was able to find the money to let Ed go to China, and he wouldn't have done this work if that hadn't happened. So in some tiny, tiny little way, I was able to push him forward in, in a way that was new for him, and that was so exciting. The work is, is still amazing. It still holds up, you know, 15 years later. 
Excellent. Okay. Well, 28 years later, your work still holds up. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I would imagine over the years that we've all worked together doing various bits and pieces, um, I would imagine that your legacy and your mentorship of artists in this area extends beyond just Ed Bean. Um, I would imagine there are quite an awful lot of people who will be excited to see you go, uh, including myself and our photographer here, Stephen Frank. Um, uh, you know, at some point we have to just figure out some way of thanking you um, for allowing this space to continue and flourish and bring something that has been uh, vital and enlightening to our lives. So, you know, as again, I've been here for a few years, came over as an immigrant. Oshawa is not necessarily always the first place you think of immigrating to uh, when you're coming from Europe, possibly. Uh, but I found an arts and music community here that has fed me over the years mm -hmm. and you have been part of it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.